friends, my name is Isis and I'm an educator performer at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. And since we are practicing social distancing right now, I'm going to be teaching you how to make some delicious signs right from your home. Uh, we're actually going to be taking a closer look at guacamole making through a scientific lens. And as we get started, feel free to pause or rewind the video as much as you need. Uh, but let's get to it. Okay, now to our ingredients list. We'll be needing four ripe avocados. You can tell they're ripe when you go to squeeze them and they're nice and soft to the touch. This one might actually be a little bit too squishy, but there's no food waste here, so we're gonna use it anyway, right? Uh, also, some people like to take this knob at the top out and look at the color inside. If it's nice and green like this, it usually means it's good to go. We'll also need half an onion, two Roma tomatoes, one lemon, or if you have limes, you can also substitute it for that. Uh, some salt, and if you like to spice it up, you can add a jalapeno or even more. We'll also be needing some fresh cilantro. And last but not least, some sour cream. All right, now as far as tools go, we'll be using a bowl, a cutting knife, a spoon, fork, some measuring uh, spoons as well as cups, and a lemon squeezer or extractor, or you can use your hands as well. Okay, now that we have everything, let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is take our avocado and cut it in half. We're gonna cut right along the, the longer side, kind of like this, and then we're gonna go around the whole thing. Make sure you don't cut through the seed, just around the seed. And avocados are actually made up of a ton of different molecules including enzymes. And enzymes are specific proteins that speed up chemical reactions and they act as a sort of turbo button. And so we actually have a lot of enzymes in our own bodies as well. Some of them help us break down food we eat, others help us, uh, our cells divide or our hair grow, and tons of different uh, very important functions. Okay, now that we have half our, our avocado cut in half, we're gonna go ahead and scoop it into our bowl. All right, so now you're gonna need the spoon and start scooping. Okay, and something we actually have in common with uh, fruits and veggies is that we normally keep these enzymes that we just talked about trapped inside our cells. Uh, however, when the fruit is sliced, uh, just as we did, or mashed, these enzymes that are trapped um, are exposed to oxygen in the air, which then activates a reaction known as oxidation. This oxidation, also known as enzymatic browning, leads to a formation of melanin, just like the one that determines our skin color, and it is responsible for the browning of fruits and veggies such as apples, bananas, lettuce, and in this case, avocados. This reaction is also very similar to that of rust forming on metal. And if you've ever caught an avocado, you probably know it turns brown in like two seconds. That is actually because avocados have high quantities of the enzyme polyphenol oxidase, which is responsible for that browning. But oxidation not only makes our guacamole unappetizing, it can also change its nutrient content. There's vitamins such as vitamin C, which are also oxidized when exposed to air. Uh, so the longer we leave our guacamole exposed or any fruit or veggie, the lower its nutrient content might be. But no worries, we can slow this oxidation process down and keep our guacamole fresh, nutritious, and delicious. And there's a variety of ways we can do that. So people usually slow oxidation by either adding an acid, uh, using heat, cooling down, or even just limiting air exposure. But now I want to challenge all of you to predict which of the ingredients we're using today or processes are going to help slow that oxidation down. Okay, so take a second and pause this video to start brainstorming, but don't take too long because your avocado is my brown. You might have guessed it, but our secret ingredient and most important ingredient is the lemon. So now we're going to go ahead and cut our lemon right in half, and then we're going to squeeze it into our guacamole. This one's a little bit too big, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it in half again. All right, and now you can either use your hands if you would like to, or if you have these handy dandy tools, you can also use one of these. Just find that it's a little bit easier for me. And go ahead and squeeze that lemon juice right in there. And if you would like to find out more about acids, go ahead and check out our lemon volcano video. I'm gonna add a little bit more lemon juice into my wok since I really like it. Uh, but growing up, I always saw my mom adding 
lemon or lime juice into a guacamole or even rubbing it on surfaces of avocados that were left over and I was really puzzled by it. So now we're going to go ahead and take a closer look at all the cool chemistry that happens in this reaction. Once added to our guacamole, the ascorbic acid or vitamin C found in our lemon will act as a sort of barrier between oxygen and polyphenol oxidase. And until this lemon juice has completely evaporated or been absorbed, oxygen will be reacting with the ascorbic acid found within, keeping our avocado from turning brown. But not only that, the lemon juice also is acidic enough to denature that polyphenol oxidase. And denature is just a fancy word for it. make it lose its shape and stop working. And that is because polyphenol oxidase actually works best on a 5 to 7 range on the pH scale, as we can see here whereas lemon juice has a pH of around two. And another option would be to cover our guacamole with plastic wrap. And I've also seen some people pat down their guacamole and kind of create a seal in a container and then pour water over it. And again, that's to prevent that oxygen from reacting with the polyphenol oxidase. And another option would be to just chill it in the fridge as enzymes are less active in lower temperatures. And now we're gonna add the rest of our ingredients in. We got the tomatoes, uh, the onions, the jalapeno, as well as the fresh cilantro. You can cut them as big or as small as you would like, just depends on your preference. Let's go ahead and add that. And then we're gonna mix it all up. All right, you can use your spoon for that. Now let's mix. Okay, after we've mixed all of our ingredients, we're gonna add our very last and also pretty important ingredient, which is sour cream. Again, I used less ingredients since I'm only making this for myself. Okay, let's add the sour cream. And sour cream not only adds a creamy texture, it also contains lactic acid, which is uh, with food, which further protects the guacamole from browning. So then now we're gonna have a very fresh and green guacamole thanks to our lemon as well as our sour cream. And there you have it, our delicious wok. Also make sure to add some salt at the end. But thank you all for watching and cooking up some science with me today. I had tons of fun and hope you did too. If you like more resources or are interested in more experiments, you can always check out our website dmns.org slash learn and the Thurman Museum of Nature and Science would love to see your creation so make sure you tag us on social media using the hashtag DMNS Science Party or also you can tweet us at Denver Museum NS. But stay curious everyone, now I'm off to eat this with some chips.